Welcome back to The Independence, where we welcome lively discussion, especially from people we disagree with. Communists, statists, warmongers. These are all folks who perplex us, but instead of criticizing, we thought we'd bring a real-life commie into the studio for a good group probe. Jesse Meyerson, a self-identified communist. I'm not, I'm not flinging insults here. That's what he calls himself. He was an Occupy Wall Street advocate and the host of the Disorderly Conduct podcast. He wrote a recent article for Rolling Stone asking for state ownership of pretty much everything. <laughs> Welcome back, Jesse. Are you ready to play Ask a Communist? Oh, I, it's my favorite game. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right, question number one. And this comes from our hostess, me. Should the U.S. nationalize Fox News, Jesse? I read the piece that that comes from in Salon. I have to say it's not my favorite vision for the media. What? It didn't strike me as so great. A little but disappointed. Why? I'd like to note three things. One, the capitalist media basically sucks because basically what it is, the, the necessity to um, desperately find as many viewers as possible to sell the ads, to furnish the executives with huge um, uh, salaries. That gold's not going to buy itself. Though. <laughs> it, doesn't, you know that, right? it obviously is not concomitant with the, the um, mission of the fourth estate, which is to confront people in power and expose them and hold them accountable. And so write they, listicles about <laughs> yeah, communist right. so, so you've so got you like, you know, Fox like News and MSNBC or... and, and, and The Economist and, and The New York Times, and basically they all suck across the board. But I, I will also note um, that, uh, the, that NPR and uh, PBS, they basically do good work, but really the best hope we have for like a democratic participatory media is the internet, where uh, there's very low barriers to entry. You can curate your own news intake, you can create your own media output, and that is why capitalists are fighting tooth and nail to figure out a way of monetizing the internet by getting government-granted monopolies, anti-free exchange government-granted monopolies on uh, IP. Yes, keep the government out of the internet. Thank you. Yeah, I'm absolutely. With you on that one. Do you agree with the communist gentleman? Look, you know, uh, democratic access to the internet is one of the greatest things that have happened in our lifetime. It's the best thing for media. It's why I'm optimistic and not pessimistic about media. That and vibrating condoms. All right. Yes. Question number two. <laughs> oh, God. The commies <laughs> took my family's hemp farm in Romania. Can you help me get it back? Uh, I can't, but I'll, I'll make you a deal. Okay. Capitalists kidnapped and enslaved millions of Africans and exterminated the uh, indigenous population of this continent and kept women the property of their um, husbands and fathers and committed uh, Mike Davis's book, Late Victorian Holocausts, and had lots of wars and massacres Jesse, and you, genocides Jesse, after the Second World War. Jesse, you are aware that slavery is an institution that is older than writing, sir. Capitalists did not invent that. Slavery in the United States is what industrialized capitalism, the great commodity that really fueled the rise of industrial capitalism was textiles in Britain. Where did they get all that cotton from? If you notice the gulags in, oh, so in the Soviet States, Union. Yeah. No, so so, the so our economy collapsed in 1865? No. no. Yeah. I, I, obviously. And the gulags weren't filled with slaves? The gulags were filled with oh, slaves. Oh, they were. And, what and that, that was shows. a capitalist mistake as well. Uh, no, and what, what I'm saying is that what that shows is that industrialism has everywhere and in every circumstance required slave labor. It's a nasty thing. It's obviously not unique to communism. It is so nasty, it's helped a billion people get out of poverty over the last 25 years. Horrible. Would you, <laughs> like our friends in France, kidnap your boss? This seems like a sensible libertarian solution. Doesn't it? it doesn't require on big state power. They took matters into their own hands, just like Kennedy said she would if I went and showed up at her house and laid claim to it. Seems like you guys should really support this. Libertarians kind of thing. abide by the non aggression axiom. We also respect people's rights to property, so I won't come steal your jacket just because I think it would probably Although fit you. Although you do have a great tie tonight. Well, if there were, if, thank you so yeah. much. Well, property and personal possessions are different, right? Like when we're talking, when I'm talking about well, communism. Well, that's convenient. That's a, that's a convenient <laughs> line you're drawing in the sand. It's, and it's, well, it's totally a red it's, it's, not, it's not mine. Property is something that has deeds, right? A title, a deed, a mortgage, a, a stock, a bond. From Barney's? <laughs> a receipt is not a title ah, to ownership. Ah, but perhaps it is. <laughs> I, I think you could, you could make a claim that a receipt is a contract, much like a, a deed or a mortgage. One might. But here's the point. If you don't have big government and their guns backing up these and adjudicating the property disputes, it's left to vigilantes who go out and exert or, their own violence. Or individuals who ensure that you don't steal their well, stuff. Well, many, many vigilantes are individuals. Let's go to question <laughs> five, which Camille's going to ask. Can we skip four? <laughs> Things aren't mutually exclusive. Go exactly. to five. Let's get down to Do it. Do you genuinely consider yourself a, con a communist? Are you comfortable with that label? And if not, what do you call yourself? I am. I, I do consider myself that. Obviously, I don't mean by that that I believe in like the the great Chinese famine or the gulags or something like obviously oh I'm a nice guy. Who, what's the, what's the good communist outcome that you like? The good communist outcome is everybody having the resources, the access to resources that they need. That to has flourish. happened in world history. 
No, there has never been a time in world history where there hasn't been massive starvation and privation. What I'm talking about is everybody having shelter, food, education, health care, community, and culture. And if capitalism they have access to those six things, that is that will be the... the um, where the has communism about. delivered those things? It hasn't, but capitalism hasn't then why, either. It's why, come pretty why, close. Are you, why are you hanging your hat on a, a failed mantle? Well, so are capitalists hanging their hat on the failed mantle. The point is that if an economic system is to be successful, it's going to have those outcomes, and I'm trying to move beyond capitalism All right, well, we to will, a more fair We will system. play this game again if you'll come back. I would love to. And we'll have, we'll have participation from the Twitters and the people on the Internet <laughs> and the good log survivors. All right. The story behind the story tonight is not about Chris Christie's possibly corrupt power grab. It's the institution that's been around longer than the governor. You haven't heard this angle. I guarantee it. Stay with us.